I'd now like to welcome Dr. Beth Cronin, Vice Chair of the Rhode Island Section of the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists. I'm honored to be here today to speak in support of the Reproductive Health Care Act. As an OBGYN who practices right here in Providence, I can tell you directly about the importance of codifying Roe v. Wade into Rhode Island law. Protecting the individual's right to terminate a pregnancy is necessary for the health and well-being of all pregnant individuals. As the Vice Chair of the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, I represent more than 140 physicians and partners who are committed to providing safe, evidence-based health care for the women of our state. Abortion, like pap smears and prenatal care, is essential health care. The Reproductive Health Care Act will not change how I or any other physician in this state currently practice medicine. It will simply keep abortion safe and legal for all citizens of Rhode Island. Many factors influence and necessitate an individual's need for an abortion. This includes, but is not limited, to rape, contraceptive failure, intimate partner violence, fetal anomalies, and illness during pregnancy. Regardless of the reason one needs an abortion, anyone making this choice deserves compassionate, empathic care. When abortions are illegal or difficult to access, women resort to desperate measures to end unwanted pregnancies, including bodily trauma, ingestion of unsafe chemicals, and relying on unqualified providers. When I have spoken to colleagues who were practicing before abortion was legal in the United States, they have many, many stories of caring for women, as Dr. Wen mentioned, who came critically ill or died from unsafe abortions. We cannot put Rhode Islanders at risk of going back to these circumstances. According to the World Health Organization, up to 13% of maternal deaths worldwide are due to unsafe abortions. While the first trimester abortion, safe and legal, is one of the safest medical procedures available. Our goal, in order to minimize the risk of complications and mortality, is that no Rhode Islander should have to struggle to find the care they need. Talking about abortion later in pregnancy, generally meaning after 20 weeks, can be uncomfortable for many people. Developmental problems or genetic anomalies are often not detected until later in pregnancy, as many of the diagnostic tests are not available until almost 20 weeks gestation. Many of these anomalies can be incompatible with life, meaning there's no chance of survival once outside the uterus. When testing confirms a severe fetal anomaly, the subsequent medical decisions are complex, and it is essential that families are able to consider the full range of appropriate treatment, including abortion. It is heart-wrenching to counsel a family facing a severe anomaly diagnosis. These patients deserve compassion during this time, not stigma. Few know the fear a family faces when medical complications threaten a pregnant woman's health or life. In some cases, abortion is the medical intervention that may save that patient's life. Politics should not dictate that my colleagues and I stand idle during such medical crises when a safe, evidence-based treatment exists. The Reproductive Health Care Act is vital to ensuring that all individuals have safe, legal access to the full range of medical treatment options. It will ensure that qualified health care providers can develop, develop, deliver compassionate medical care without political interference and without fear of punishment. It will treat abortion on equal footing with all other health care procedures by repealing the archaic and unconstitutional laws that are still on our books. We all deserve to enter our health care provider's office confident that the care we receive will be based on solid scientific research and experience and not based on a political mandate from our state house. Passing the Reproductive Health Care Act will protect the crucial need for access to abortion for all pregnant individuals in our state. We need to rest assured that if any one of us were in a position to need an abortion, we could access it regardless of what the U.S. Supreme Court may decide.